So the uh, fentanyl crisis, obviously, mm. uh, I think it qualifies as an actual crisis, mm. and uh, well over a thousand people have died the last three years. So I'm curious, uh, in terms of addressing the issue, what what measure of responsibility, if any, do the uh, municipality and the province have, and what? responsibility do the local residents have in terms of providing a community and support for the people who live here who are taking a risk through fostering active drug use uh, when they're aware that there's a substance floating around that's killed over a thousand residents indigenous to this area hmm oh yeah big question uh, multifaceted uh, as for the municipality and exactly what they need to be doing for people that are experiencing the negative effects of the fentanyl crisis, uh, I personally think that they should make everything legal. Um, and so... Views around the, what the municipality should do around just like prohibition and drug use in general are so far off from what they're doing that any of my suggestions are like essentially not constructive. They're like tear down the whole judicial system, <laughs> uh, get rid of cops, move to restorative justice, get rid of like penal systems in general. You know, move to something a little more less archaic. <laughs> um, so, would you say you're uh, more of a libertarian that views the uh, personal autonomy of the self within a social construct as <gasps> something that should work? Or that that's a big one. I just think that uh, if your goal is to prevent people from doing drugs and and you want to not have recidivism for uh, like drug use and you want to provide therapy uh, punitive measures are only going to exacerbate that problem uh, so as opposed to like overarching things about autonomy and people's rights in relation to individual and groups I don't really know but if your goal is to not have people commit crimes, be homeless, die from drug use, then your approach should not be to penalize them, traumatize them, you know, ruin their lives. It's not going to go very far. Um, so that's generally my stance on that one. For In terms of residents, um, it's just, it's like, my grandfather lives in the interior. And there's a lot of forest fires there. So one of the things that he's done, and forest fires are bad. You don't like forest fires. Uh, he has an orchard. And so uh, forest fires burn down your orchard. So he runs around his orchard every fall and he picks up all of the detritus, like the foliage and the random bushes and whatever, and he cuts them all down and he puts them in a pile and he gets a permit and he burns all of it. And that's him mitigating a risk in his area that he knows is there from historical stuff and the problem's only been getting worse you know and it's part of a broader issue of climate change that he can't really control um, so he just mitigates the risk that he can most immediate to him um, and so essentially I think that everybody has that responsibility to themselves right so if the risk for me is that someone's going to die on my front doorstep, the responsible thing to do is to get naloxone training and then give them a shot of naloxone and call the ambulance so that there aren't dead people everywhere. Um, because we don't like that. <laughs> um, so that's, that's generally my feeling on the, on like, to what degree local residents have an onus. Is it like, well, you know it's happening, you know what you can do about it. To do nothing is dumb. And if your orchard burns down, you should have burnt the brush around it. 
So is it your fault that forest fires happen? No. Is it your fault that global warming happened? No. Do you still have to deal with the risks that can affect you? Absolutely. That's life. And in this case, it's also death. So let's try to avoid it. <laughs> so f final follow-up question then would be, isn't there a certain irony that uh, by all accounts with the uh, caseworkers, the volunteer street workers who serve the poor and the dispossessed on the streets here, I can say personally in doing this documentary that it's well, like 98% consistent uh, that the far majority of problems that are down here are from people who are drunk, severely drunk rather than uh, drugs. And uh, you think of it, alcohol as the legal substance. Now, obviously there are exceptions with meth and whatnot, but heroin is actually an opioid. So it actually mellows people out. Yeah, heroin addicts are perfectly lovely people to deal with. They're like a little on the placid side, but for the most part, if I had to choose somebody, choose a substance, uh, abuse, like category of person that I would have to deal with every day, I would choose a heroin addict over an alcoholic 10 out of 10 times. Um, alcoholics, they like to pee on my stuff. Uh, they like to try and fight me. They're really good at damaging things. Um, and they generally aren't from here, and they generally have a lot more money, uh, which is probably makes the whole affair way more infuriating. Um, so, yeah, yeah, the, the definitely the, the vast majority of people causing like damage on the street on a regular basis would have to be alcoholics for sure. And I, you know what? I shouldn't say alcoholics. People who are extremely inebriated on liquor. Yeah. Young. Yeah, specifically young ones. Yeah, specifically young ones. Yeah, yeah. The the Friday Friday night is like, and Saturday night are my least favorite times in this neighborhood. 